Hello everyone and welcome back to Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. In this episode we'll be continuing on from where we left off in episode 3. Uh, we'll be exploring Route 204 and Flower Roma Town. Uh, so for those of you who did maybe skip past the last episode as you just wanted to see the story, this is the current state with our team. We did level up somewhat to be ready for some PvP battles. But uh, overall the team's in good shape, maybe slightly over leveled if anything. But uh, should be good to go. So uh, we left off in Orberg City having just completed the gym. If you head back towards the Orberg Gate you'll see Aiden here, or your rival. Apparently Eterna City is the way to go but you can't go through Route 207 without a bike anymore. So Jubilife City and then on to Eterna City. So yeah, that's exactly what we're going to do. Uh, now we have Rock Smash however, there is a new area within Orberg Gate that we can go through. So if you use Rock Smash on this rock here, uh, which you now just have to click on, you don't have to give the mood to any of your Pokemon, you can then just move uh, up to here, go down the stairs, and there's a couple of items that we can pick up. Yeah, if we come south you can see one of those is just off to the right there. The other is to the left and that's the one we're going to go and get first. So if you move to the left and just smash this rock here and then just keep smashing the rocks and keep moving through until you come up to this cyclist you'll notice we can then go get the item. Uh, this cyclist is the same as the one on Route 207, he's just given us a little bit of information about what the bike can do. So if I remember rightly some bikes can go up the slippery slopes and some can move over the little jumps. I don't know if that's still the case in this game or whether the bike can do both. So the item we picked up on the left hand side was a bag of Stardust. Stardust I don't believe has any use other than being sold to shops. Um, it does get sold to shops for quite a high price though so that is handy to, to pick up. Uh, particularly later on when we're looking to buy a lot of expensive items further on in the story, such as full restores, ultra balls, etc. So, quickly defeat this Geodude, and then we can carry on moving along. So to, to get the second item, you have to smash this rock here, then the next one, and then move down the ledges. Pretty simple. The item here is TM70 Flash, uh, another former hidden machine. Flash does still have use, I believe. I'm not sure if it works the same in this game, but I know in previous games there were caves that you could still see within a certain radius. But if you use Flash, that radius would extend. I don't know if that's still the case in this game. We'll find out, I assume, as we go through. But uh, yeah, it's no longer a HM, so it's no longer required to uh, make it through the story. And thank God, because it was one of the worst hidden machines there ever was non-damaging and only effective accuracy, it was a very very poor move outside of its usefulness in the overworld. So now we've got those two items, we've done everything we can here. We can now proceed back through Orberg City Gate and head back towards Jubilife City. I will say the one thing I don't like about this um, new hidden machine mechanic is the, the animation which brings up a wild bee doof or whatever every single time. It's quite frustrating actually. A bit of a waste of time but hang on. Oh yeah so there we go. If we head back through Route 203 we end up back in Jubilife City. So there's not a huge amount going on in Jubilife at the second anyway. There's still the clowns for the Pocketch company still standing around. You'll see one of them's stood in front of that building still. That should open up soon. If you come down to the left here, you'll see that the GWS is still closed up. So we're not able to use that as of yet. I'm not sure whether this unlocks as a story progression thing or if it is waiting for a new update for the game. But anyway, if you head north, You'll see here we'll meet our first, have our first encounter with the story's villain. 
Ah, oh, Harrison, impeccable timing as always. These miscreants are babbling. Show them some manners, if you will. Oh, Professor, must you be so difficult? We are approaching you strictly as businessmen. All you must do is provide us with all of your research findings. In return, we'll see to it that your assistant doesn't become collateral damage. Harrison, let's battle together and teach these losers a lesson. So we go straight into a battle here, and this is going to be uh, a double battle, actually. Our first double battle of this game. So yeah, double battles do make a return, which is good to see. So this, of course, is Team Galactic, which are the villains of this story. And they don't use particularly good Pokemon as of yet. We've got a Wormpool and a Zubat. This will be the first time we've seen Wormpool. But, uh, yeah, and Dawn's using her Turtwig as always, which is extremely weak, as always. Yeah, there's a level up for Staravia, level 15, which isn't bad considering I don't think we've ever actually used Staravia in a battle. <laughs> we might have to change that and switch them around, but uh, I don't see any need to when Monferno's strong enough to one hit everything means that we can progress through the videos a little bit quicker. And there we go, so that's a simple battle. They're, they're not very strong, they're pretty simple to to defeat. Oh, Dragon Breath on Onyx. Not a particularly great move, but something with a different typing to Rock, so why not? <laughs> I believe Rock Throw is doesn't have any usefulness over the top of Smackdown, so I think I'll just swap those, swap Rock Throw out. We defeated the Team Galactic Grunts. How is this madness possible? The two of us losing to children. This won't do. Time for retreat. This mission's a failure. You leave us no option. We'll retreat for now. Because Team Galactic is benevolent to all, we shall leave. So they call themselves Team Galactic, do they? When Pokemon evolve, they release some sort of energy. I believe it's a mystic power far beyond our control, but Team Galactic seems to be trying to harness that power for something. Anyway, Harrison, well done. You battle quite capably. Seeing you trainers battle side by side with your Pokemon only makes me more confident in my decision to entrust you with a Pokedex. Harrison, did you know the Professor studies the evolution of Pokemon too? According to his research, 90% of all Pokemon are somehow tied to evolution. I guess that means some Pokemon must undergo startling evolutions. So Harrison, let's keep working on our Pokedex for the Professor. Uh, not sure who this is, a little girl. That was amazing. Those guys looked awfully scary, but you sure shown them. What a breath of fresh air. My name's Bebe, and I work as a systems administrator in Hart Home City, east of here. As a thanks for putting on such a good show, I'll let you access your boxes from anywhere. That's quite handy. Ah, and we also receive uh, the ball capsule. So for those of you who didn't know, in the previous iteration of these games, you were able to develop the ball capsules which your team was stored in so that when you uh, when when your Pokemon came out it would come with all different types of uh, like decorations and stickers I believe it's particularly useful for contests which have also made a return but yeah for now I'm, I'm not gonna go into that I may do in the next episode but for now I'm not too interested now I'm trying to remember here, one of these buildings, I believe, is the TV building. Uh, oh, no, it's not down this way. Uh, there's a new building which we're able to access. Actually, I think it might have been that building that the clown was covering up. So I'll quickly have a run over there and go in here. Yes, it's this one. So Jubilife TV, we're now able to access this building. And there's a couple of things you can do in here. If you speak to this person up in the top left, uh, which uh, it'll be a different person every single day of the week. So if you're 
if your trainer is not the same as mine, that's why. There's one trainer you battle you can do every day, and they use various different Pokemon. But they, they're just a good method for getting some additional experience. The Pokemon they use actually match levels as well with the strongest member of your party. So it's very useful for obtaining XP when the trainers around your area are not of the same level as you. So you gain reduced experience. You can always come back here and it will really help with, with leveling up. Also, when you hit the later stages of the game, having a high level opponent can be really useful. As you can see, uh, we're going to defeat it anyway pretty simply in uh, about three hits, so it should be okay. And that's the first one taken down. So this guitarist here also uses a Zubat. Oh, level up for Monferno, that's useful. And also uses two Zubat. So I'm actually going to swi switch out for Lucio here. Uh, uses super effectiveness against the Zubat for an easy defeat. Thunder Shock here, whilst not the best move for Lucio, should should do a fair bit of damage against Zubat. So let's see. Ah, there we go. Yeah, almost a one hit. We'll get him on the next one. Well, thankfully we avoid that supersonic as confusion can be very frustrating and there we go so that's that trainer defeated um we received i think 157 experience from monferno earlier and another 166 here for lucio so it's worth it's worth doing this battle just to get some good experience in the tank Uh, so there's a couple of other things you can do. If you speak to this counter lady here, she does what's called the lottery or the lotto ticket draw. So basically it draws a ticket and it will then match the number against the IDs of every Pokemon you have in your party and your boxes. Depending on the number of digits that you match, you'll get a reward. There's many, many different rewards you can get. I think one ranges all the way up to it might be a Master Ball. Not quite sure for this game, but I know it was in previous games. So if you come up and speak to the gentleman between the two sets of stairs, he'll actually give you three stickers. Uh, these stickers, I believe, are matched with the typing of your starter Pokemon. And they're really useful for um, for the ball capsule decorating that I spoke about earlier on. So they're good for show off, basically. This guy here which asks which TV show is your favourite TV show. I'm not particularly, don't particularly watch any of them, but I think the answer you give might change the sticker you receive. But yeah, he'll give you one sticker depending on your answer. Yeah, if I just keep speaking to anyone, but everyone, but I don't think there's anything more you can do. Now uh, these areas here uh, tell you about your records in online battles and contests i believe though i'm not fully sure how you use them but anyway we'll just have a little poke around and see if i can work it out i think it might be the unit which the gentleman stood in front of which is stopping me from using it so yeah i'm just gonna i'll just continue on there is one more floor here but I don't think there's anything of use on this floor. No, there's not. So yeah, we can just now use the elevator to go back down to the bottom. And then we can proceed on to Flow Aroma Town. Interesting that the floor layout is first floor to fourth floor. I note that I believe this is an American thing where the, the ground floor is called the first floor. I myself are from England, so normally we call the first floor the, the ground floor. And then the first floor we go up is the floor we call first floor, which is interesting. So what would be an American second floor is the first floor for us. 
Uh, so one of the things we can do is you can go out of there and go west and you can come into the, the Poket building. If you speak to the president here, he will give a new app for your Poketch, the Memo Pad app. So on this app, you can essentially just write yourself notes. I don't find it particularly useful, but yeah, as you, if you talk to him again, he tells you that the next app can be got after three gyms. So as you progress through the story, you'll get more and more apps. But for now, we can't get another one. So we'll just progress on. So this is a route we visited earlier. This is route 204. If we come up through here and we re-enter the Ravaged Path. Earlier on, we weren't able to continue as we didn't have Rock Smash. Now we do, we can now continue on. If you come in and you go off to the left here, or the west, you can weave your way in and out of all these rocks, or you can just re-smash them, and you'll see that there's an item on the floor. And that item is TM39 Rock Tomb. A useful rock-type move, worth picking up. There's no harm in doing so. Uh, so yeah, then if you smash these rocks over on the right, we can now proceed uh, towards Flora Roma Town. First, we've got to deal with the northern section of Route 204. So first up, we have this trainer here. We are actually going to watch the battle with this trainer, as she does use one Pokemon we have not seen before. First up, she sends out a Badu, which obviously we've seen plenty of times. But you will obviously easily be taken down by Monferno here with its super effective attacks. So, the second Pokemon here the Aroma Lady Taylor uses is one we've never seen before, which is a Cheruby. It's not strong, it's just a a grass type Pokemon, but as we haven't seen it before, I thought it was worth showing. Interesting they spelt Taylor, look, they spelled it wrong there, but that's a new spelling on me. Next training here, trainer here is this bug cat called Bug Catcher Brandon. He just uses a worm pool and a cricketot. And then if you move here, you fight these two twins called Liv and Liz. They again use two Pokemon we've never seen before. They both use uh, Pachirisu. Pachirisu is actually quite interesting. It's, a, it's an electric type, actually. Looks like a normal type, but it is an electric type. We haven't fought, fought too many electric types so far, so that's a new one. So we send out our first two here, which is Luxio and Monferno, both of which are a significantly higher level. Um, than the level 9 Pachirisu, so we should take these out pretty quickly. I'm just going to use Power Up Punch and Bite here. I don't believe Pachirisu has the ability to paralyse us on impact, so we'll just use physical moves as it benefits our Pokemon stats a lot more. We should be able to take these all out in two hits, I believe. And there's one. Of course, with Monferno using Power Up Punch, he's just getting stronger and stronger, so if not, we'll easily be able to take it out on the next attack. Yeah, new level for Luxia, that's good to see, level 16. That might actually give us the little boost we needed to take this one out. We'll never know, but either way, they're going to take it out in two hits. Patrice is not particularly strong, so not too worried, but some good XP from both of those, to be fair. And that's twins Liv and Liz defeated. Now, within this route, there are actually two items. If you go over to the west here and through this little gap, there is a bullet seed, which is pretty good. And just to the north of the exit to the Ravage Path, there is actually an awakening, which I haven't actually gone back and picked up, but I, I will do so. Uh, the Pokemon available in this area is nothing new that we haven't seen before. You can pick up a Zubat, a Starly, a Bidoof, a Krikatot, a Shinx, a Badu, 
and Magikarp from fishing in the lake. So yeah, noth nothing we haven't seen before, so it's not worth covering. We'll just pick up some XP from them and then move on to Floaroma Town. Floaroma Town is this lovely town full with flowers. There's not a huge amount to do here, so we'll just quickly run through all of this before we progress into the next episode. So if you come into this house, I don't think there's actually anything in this house. It's just a casual conversation and gives you some background into the lore on Floor Roma Town. Oh no, I'm wrong. If you speak to this girl here with her Clefairy, uh, actually she will give you some TMs for the move Pluck, which is a flying type move. Just east of that building here is this little berry shop. There's two trees with berries out the front, which you can pick. Be aware that if you don't pick them, they can actually rot over the next coming days. Because uh, I believe that clock starts as soon as you see them. So I'd recommend picking them straight away. There's two Oran berries and two cherry berries. Oran berries, uh, if you use them or give them to your Pokemon, will recover 10 HP. And cherry berries recover paralysis. So both are very useful. Within the berry store, if you speak to this girl on the left hand side, she'll give you a spray duck. A spray duck is used for watering flowers so your berries can grow. On the right hand side, you've got this lady here who gives you one berry per day. I believe it's a random berry from a small selection. And the girl just above her can allow you to swap berries for stickers for your ball capsule. Within the Pokemon Center, there's actually nothing new. So, just going to quickly rest up and recover our Pokemon and its PP. Uh, and then we'll have a look around what we're going to do in the next episode. So, if you want to exit the Pokemon Center, uh, there is this just this little house to the east. Actually, we'll just quickly explore in here and just show you. Uh, there's not a lot in here other than one man who just deep. And these man and woman actually just detail what you can do with honey. So honey is something you can slather on a tree and it will encourage some Pokemon battles. It used to be the way you get Munchlax, though thankfully I believe that's changed now. In the northwest of Floroma Town you'll see there's two galactic grunts here passing the way and stopping us from proceeding. So that means the next place we have to go is to the east side of Floroma Town, down here, which we're not actually going to do right now we will cover in the next episode. So for now, that's where we're going to leave it. I hope you've enjoyed, and I'll catch you in the next episode.